Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be making customizable animated trees in a watercolor slash drawing slash painting type of style or whatever you want to call it. We'll be using the stylized asset suite add-on to accomplish this and it's really easy to make these. The only reason why the video is like 20 minutes long is because I'm just going to show you how much variety of different types of beautiful trees you can make so you can really see how useful it might be for your scenes or games or whatever you're making. We'll also talk about exporting later in this video. You can get the files for these trees along with the add-on in the download page. So let's get into it. Alright guys, so before we start this video, make sure you have the sapling tree gen add-on enabled. You can go to edit preferences and in the add-ons tab, just type in sapling tree gen and hit the checkbox. Also, you guys might notice me doing this a lot in the video where I'm like toggling the overlays off and on. Basically, I have it bound to my tilde key. So yeah, just remember that. Alright guys, so the first thing we can do is hit shift A and go to the curve tab and we can add a sapling tree you'll see this menu that comes up. And the thing about this menu is for some reason with this sapling tree add-on, you have to set all your settings in this menu right now, meaning like you can't change it later. So there's so many settings here you can adjust. You can just play around with it. I don't even know what all of them do to be honest. If we come over here to this armature tab, we can hit the use armature button, which is going to allow us to animate it later. You could also go to the animation tab and you can turn on armature animation and the add-on can like automatically generate you an animation from the get-go if that's what you want. Anyways, let's come over here to the leaves tab and if you click show leaves you can see it automatically gives our tree some leaves now by default the shape is hexagonal you can change it to other things too as we'll see later but for now let's just keep it as hexagonal leaves okay so now we can click away from that menu and what we're going to do is go into render view and go to our stylized asset suite add-on and we're going to hit new to make a new shader so first obviously i'm doing the tree trunks i'm just going to set the base color to a brownish type of color and now on the leaves object i'm hitting new again and i'm setting it to like a pink color because I wanted this to be one of those like soccer trees. You can add a stylized 3D lighting main effect by hitting the add effect button and we can add a sun after that and you know you can play around with the sun strength and do all of that good stuff. One thing that's a really good idea to do is to set the steps count to one. What that's going to do is it's basically going to allow us to have tune shading. One steps means basically all we're going to have is two different shades which is generally how tune shading is right and after you set it to one make sure you play around with the light slider slash controller parameter until you get something that you like. Over here I set the light value to be something like 4, just something really bright, and I enable the bloom in settings as well, that's a pretty important thing to do here. Of course you can use the colorized shadow feature as well to give it like a bluish shadow color and tint it a bit, so you could do that if you want. After that's done, what we want to do is we want to add a charcoal slash watercolor effect, so select that, hit add, and if we view it, we can hit open on the texture, select one of the textures from the texture pack that comes with this add-on, I'm using the watercolor chaotic 01 texture. And so yeah, you can start playing around with the parameters, you can see here we already have a pretty cool thing going. And yeah, we'll talk about the window slash UV coordinate switch feature later. So I realized I didn't really put enough leaves on this tree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this tree to the side and we're going to add another one. But this time you're going to see we're going to use a higher leaves count. So for leaves, I'm setting it to something like 200. And as you can see now, if we just take the material that we made already and assign it to this leaves object, you can see we have something. Obviously, you'll have to adjust it a bit for this new object. But yeah, we can focus on doing that later and making it look actually more perfect and how we like. I also remembered to rename the branches material here and I assigned it to the other tree as well so they both have the branches material. So now what I decided to do is I duplicated the sun so we have two suns now and I rotated it a bit so now we kind of have like light going everywhere on the tree and that was just a stylistic thing that I wanted to do. You don't have to do that if you don't want to but I thought it looked cool. You can also add the watercolor slash charcoal effect to our branch material. And once again, I set it to watercolor chaotic and I'm just playing around with the settings here to try and get it to look a bit nice. So yeah, after that for the leaves, I wanted to add a colored circular light. So I hit add for that effect. And as you can see, we get a colored circular light. But the thing is, for some reason, even though it's set to orange here with a high value, as you can see, the value is like 89, something really high. So that's going to give it a lot of light. For some reason, it's causing blueness on our object wherever the light is. And the reason for that is because it's like bleeding kind of. And in order to fix this, you can just swap the stylized 3D lighting main and the colored light effects. You can swap their positions in the effect layer so that the colored light comes first and that's going to fix this. So now, as you can see, when we move our circular light around, you can see it now works properly and 
you can adjust all the settings like that. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. After that, to just add some more variation to our tree, we can add a dynamic texture. And for this, we're just going to have like some color variation in our tree. So as you can see, we have the empty that gets added and we can set the color to like red or dark red. As you can see by default, when we scale up the empty, it's just a sphere of this dark red color, but that's because we have the gradient sphere mask parameter set to full. So we can just disable that and set it to noise. And what that'll let us do is have a noise texture of this dark red color. So if you go to the select mask to edit drop down menu, you can select the noise mask and from there you can just edit it. So yeah, over here I switched the blend mode to color just to show you you can switch the blending mode as well, but I just like to keep it at mix, which basically means replace. So now talking about the window slash UV coordinate switch, you might not like the parallax effect that is there by default. So what you can do is you can put the window slash UV coordinate switch to one, which will set it to UV coordinates. And now that watercolor texture will be based on the UVs of the object instead of just parallax, if that makes sense. I mean, when you do it in your scene, you'll see what I mean. But basically once you switch it, obviously you're going to have to adjust a lot of the settings to whatever you like, because now it's, it's different obviously. So just adjust it and keep adjusting it until you get something that you think you like. One other thing is if you guys are using UV coordinates instead of window, if you're using hexagonal leaves, it's a good idea to go into edit mode, select everything and hit U unwrap to unwrap it. But for the sake of right now, I'm going to keep it on parallax by setting the window slash UV coordinate switch to zero. So now I want to talk about animating these trees a little bit. If you remember earlier on the menu that appears when you first add the tree, there's the animation tab which you can check armature animation and it'll by default just give you this animation and you can do that if you want or you could instead use the windy armature add-on which is an add-on that you get for free if you buy the stylized asset suite add-on basically what you can do is you can select a bone hit Control l and then you can hit template one for example and basically what it's going to do is it's going to add wind to that bone so the advantage of doing it this way is you can adjust and animate the wind strength even like after you first make the tree and you can animate the wind strength as well if you want it to like blow a lot harder later or a lot lighter later so you can adjust that you can also adjust the speed and and yeah it's just very customizable like that you'll have to select all of these bone chains individually by selecting the bone hitting Control l so that's the only downside of doing it this way but yeah overall it offers you just like a lot more control and smoothness so yeah as you can see here when i increase the strength things are like off kilter a bit for some of the branches because i didn't assign the wind to them yet but yeah back to our other model one issue we run into is you might notice that with that dynamic texture we added with the dark red color when the armature rotates those dark red spots don't rotate with it which is an issue so what we can do is if we go to our dynamic texture we can switch it from object coordinates to uv coordinates instead and now instead of using that empty it's just going to use the uv coordinates of the object and uh, it's a good idea here to go into edit mode on our leaves object and select all the faces and then hit u and then unwrap just to unwrap it and now if you adjust the noise mask you can see we have something similar to before we have that dark red color but now when we rotate our model and it's like animating that redness is actually going to follow with it because now it's based on the uvs of the object rather than that empty another cool thing you can do if you want is you can add a plane and you can add a floating strokes effect basically what it lets you do is it just turns the object transparent that you have selected and you can create a new texture for drawing very easily and then use any of the brushes that come with this add-on and you can just paint on that plane and those strokes will appear the reason this is cool is because you can take these planes that you make and kind of like put them around your model for a more stylistic look if that's what you want obviously here it didn't really work out that well but i'm just showing you in case you want to do it you could do that and then you can parent it to the bone on the armature if that's what you want to do so for our next type of tree we're going to add a plane and this time we're going to use this plane as our object for the leaves so you can see here i'm kind of just making a plane that i added some loop cuts to with Control r and now i'm just like messing around with the shape of it a bit it's funny because i kind of just like did this randomly and it ended up looking good when i made the tree so there's literally like an infinite amount of types of trees you can make by doing this like you can use a sphere for the leaf object for example or you can use a plane that we adjusted to look like kind of a leaf type of thing like we did in this situation so after you're done making this leaf object you can see i really didn't even make it into anything amazing it's just like a very low poly thing you can rename it and you can add a sapling tree once again this time for show leaves we want to set the leaf shape to dupla faces and for leaf object set it to be the name of the object that you just created and then you can adjust the count and all that from there and yeah so as you can see it's just a really diverse thing you can have 
any object scattered on the tree and used as a leaf object. So here you can see I'm taking the material once again that we already made and I'm going to hit the make material slash effect single user copy feature which just basically duplicates the shader so that we're not affecting our other trees that we made before and we can edit this one as its own shader. So for making this tree we're going to set the window slash UV coordinate switch to 1 so that it's using UV coordinates and so from there you can play around with the settings and you can get something that looks cool pretty quickly honestly and once again you can adjust around the sunlight to give it a position that you want and over here I'm just playing around with the colors again I forgot to enable the colorized shadow that we set to a blue color to tint the shadow and make it blue I'm just doing that here and just doing some more color correction but once again you can play around with these settings on the charcoal slash watercolor effect very easily and yeah there's really not much else to say there Oh yeah, also this is me from the future, if you go into edit mode on the plane and you start duplicating around that plane and like scaling it, you can get it to look even cooler and have like these tiny leaf fragments that appear around the edges of your tree, so that's just a really cool thing I recommend doing. Obviously you can also play with the scale and get it to look even cooler if that's what you want. As you can see over here, I also enabled the colorized shadow on this old tree that we made before. Anyways, we can do this circular light thing on the new tree that we added as well. But you'll notice right now we have to take the empty that we made before and drag it all the way to the other side of our scene and use it like that. If you don't want to do that, it's really easy. You can just go to the circular light effect tab in our menu and in the associated empty option, you can just exit out and you can add a new empty. And it can be any object, honestly, that you use as an empty, but just eyedropper tool it. And then now, as you can see, when we move around that empty, we have a new circular light just for that tree. Okay, so now for the next tree, we can just duplicate that leaf plane that we made and put it at the center of our scene. Hit Alt P and clear transformation to get rid of whatever's on the top. And then we can add yet another sapling tree. And we're going to do the same thing, use duplifaces and set it to this duplicated leaf plane that we made. And I adjusted the size of the tree a bit this time because I liked how it looked. And yeah, so for the base color, I set it to more of like a green color this time. And if you play around with the texture scale, you can have something that kind of just looks like leaves that are like scattered on our tree. You can adjust how dark it is, how bright it is, how the shadows look. It's really endless. And also if you go into edit mode, you can scale an X or Y the leaf plane that we made and it'll update on our model. So that's just another really cool thing that you can do. And yeah, once again for the circular light, we can add a new empty here and we can select it as the circular light object. And as you can see now we have it appearing. So yeah, just some really cool stuff right there. Alright guys, so for our next type of tree, we're going to use an icosphere, and basically we're going to use the sphere as the object, and we're going to set the leaves count to something low, like 25 maybe. And basically, you just want to go into edit mode, and you want to start duplicating around these icospheres, and what that's going to do is it's going to give us our tree a more realistic and natural look, so you can do that. As you can see here, I also changed the color to a more whitish type of color. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I just wanted to there, so that's why I did it. One other thing you can also do is, if you add another object in edit mode on that icosphere object, you can assign a different material to that and basically it'll scatter that around your tree as well So as you can see here, I added like a red kind of like fake leaf looking thing And I also added a charcoal slash watercolor texture to it And as you can see that's just something you can do if you want to get a lot more variety You can also like scale it up and just give your tree a more painterly look but Yeah, you can also add a displace effect to the icosphere object if you want to give it more of a displacement Remember to hit the add cloud displace texture button and then play around with the strength So that's just something you can do as well if you want to displace the leaves a bit more. I also highly recommend you guys animate the displace empty that appears when you add the displace effect. After you set your keyframes, you can hit T and then hit linear, then shift T linear extrapolation so that it goes on forever. Doing this will make sure that your leaves aren't so static when they're moving around in the tree and they actually have more character to them. You can also create another small plane and using the same material as the rest of the icospheres, you can just duplicate it around and it'll give your tree a bit more detail in the sense that there's going to be more of these smaller leaf looking things. You can also hide the icosphere object once you're done editing it. So now to make this more watercolor looking, what we can do is we can switch the window slash UV coordinate switch down a lot and just play with the settings and really quickly you can see we have something that looks a lot cooler I think honestly. So yeah, just experimenting around, I like the way that this looked. So yeah, you can play around with the settings and once you're done, you can export the animation for it. We're gonna make another tree doing this once again. So if we go back to our tree with the green leaves that we made before, we can set the window slash UV coordinate switch back to window and then playing around with the settings once again, we can get something that looks pretty cool. And also once again, if you go into edit mode on the leaf 
object itself and then start duplicating it around and then scaling it down you can get a lot more detail on your model so I highly recommend you do that and then of course once you're done you can hide the plane at the bottom okay so now I want to talk a bit about baking and exporting to other softwares there's a few things we have to do first thing you should know is bloom isn't a thing that gets exported so you're gonna have to re-add that in whatever software you're exporting to. So just keep that in mind that when it bakes, it doesn't take into account Bloom. So that's something you'll have to add back later. So the next thing to know is if we're using a value that's like above one or two for our light color in our object. Like as you can see here, I have the light value for the highlight set to like four, which is too high. And the reason why it's not gonna work is because by default, when it bakes for high values like that, it just gets set to a white color because that's all it can be represented as. So make sure you switch your light value to be something like one. One other thing that we can't export is obviously parallax so we can't export the charcoal slash watercolor effect it's actually one of the only effects that can't be exported so what we have to do is we have to delete it and what we're going to do instead to add that painterly effect is we're going to add a transparent dynamic texture which actually allows us to do a lot of the same things that the charcoal slash watercolor effect does but it is exportable so you can add the effect by default just like the dynamic texture we get an empty and by default it's set to spherical meaning wherever we put the sphere is just going to have like this spherical transparency but we don't want that obviously so so we're going to disable that and we're going to enable noise first and this is a pretty important step so follow along. If you select edit noise mask, set the noise scale to be something really high like 200 or 300 or 400 and as you can see from there we get something that looks pretty cool actually. You should also remember to switch the blend mode to alpha blend because I'm not exactly sure whether or not other softwares have alpha hash. Maybe it's just a blender thing but alpha blend is like the default transparency. So set it to alpha blend so that you know that when you export it, it's going to look like what you have in blender. After that what we can do is down here where it says hand draw a mask you can hit open and select one of the watercolor textures or whatever texture you want and make sure you enable it with the enable drawing mask setting and then from there now we have that enabled as well so basically after this you just want to play around with the settings a lot and try and get something that you like the clamp features are especially important for making changes anyways after you're done with that for the branches as well we have to remove the charcoal slash watercolor effect and we're going to add yet another dynamic texture transparent for the branches and we're going to do the same exact thing that we did for the leaves it's not any different so you can see i set the noise scale really high there and i set it to alpha blend and i'm just playing around with the settings adding the watercolor texture and yeah just play around with it until you get something that you like okay after that we're basically done and we're ready to bake it for exporting for our resolution i'm using like 4096 because obviously there's so many leaves and the unwrap is very big so 4096 is good or if you want you can use something even higher than that or you could separate part of the model if that's what you want to do by selecting part of it and then hitting Control l to make sure that everything you selected is a full leaf and then you can hit p by selection to separate it if that's what you want to do i didn't personally do that here but you can if you want to separate the tree into different parts and have a different image texture for each it might make it a bit easier but yeah i'm not going to do that i'm just going to use 496 and i'm going to bake the whole leaf object as one so you can set the name to be something like pinkish orange tree i guess and you can hit bake alpha after that now what that's going to do is it's going to bake the alpha map as you can see here we can find it if we go to the UV editing tab. Now after that, you want to hit the bake diffuse lighting button, which is going to bake the lighting. And keep in mind after you do this, if there's any discrepancy, you can always fix it by going in and playing with your effect layers and you can still adjust everything. So remember that. Then after you're done, just hit start final bake and it'll do the final bake. And yeah, one other thing I want to say is you can adjust stuff after you bake as well. Just make sure you rebake it so that it updates in the image texture. Okay, anyways, if we go to our shaders tab, I'm just showing you like this is what you would do in another software with a node system. System. you'd add your texture maps for the alpha and for the final as you can see here this is what they look like pretty cool and then you can use a mix shader plug the alpha into the fact and the transparency into the a slot and the final into the b slot and then turn on alpha blend and yeah as you can see that's exactly what you would do in another software to have this working once again remember the show backface feature is very important so if the software you're exporting to doesn't allow you to turn off show backface it's important then that while you're making your tree in blender you should keep it enabled so that you know that when you export it it's going to look the same as it did in blender but yeah that's it pretty much for baking the leaves now let's do the tree trunk so for the tree trunk you'll notice when we just try to unwrap it it gives us a really bad unwrap so that's not going to work what we can do instead is we can hit f3 and then type in select sharp edges and whoops make sure you have nothing else selected and you can hit Control e and mark seam then select all the faces and then hit u and then unwrap after you do that and that's going to give us just a much nicer unwrap as you can see here so yeah from there we do the exact same thing that we did for the leaves you'll notice when we unwrap our transparent dynamic texture changed a bit and that's because when you unwrap the 
differently. Obviously it affects the watercolor image texture. So you might have to adjust things again to get it how you like. But after that, it's the exact same thing we did before. Go to bake your shader, set a name, and then bake that alpha, and then do the final bake. After that, the shader setup that you do in another software is exactly the same. So we have the alpha map there. And yeah, same thing once again. Watch out for the show back face feature because it can make things look a little bit different. But yeah, that's just how it works. Now for exporting the armature, it's very easy. If you're using the Windy Armature add-on, over here I just animated one bone chain just to keep it simple. But basically all you have to do is just select all of the bones, hit F3, type in bake action, and then enable these three settings that I enabled here. And you can basically bake for however many frames you want. If you're not using the Windy Armature add-on and you're just using the default sapling add-on animation, you can do the same thing with F3 bake action and then bake it, but just make sure that you convert the tree trunks to a mesh because it's a curve by default. So convert it to a mesh and then reparent it to the rig. And then after that, you'll be ready to export. So yeah. All right, guys. So that's basically it. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed and learned something.